has set us free. Humbly worship at his throne, saved by his grace through faith. be the Office of Morning Prayer. It begins on page 235 of the bulletin, or of the hymnal. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth shall declare your praise. Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King. God's hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are His also. For the list is made in and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. I invite you to turn to Psalm 14 in the beginning of the hymnal. We will read that psalm together, half verse by half verse. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They, they do, do abominable, abominable deeds. deeds. There, there is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good. Not, Not even, even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers, who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great terror. For, For God, God is, is with, with the generation, generation of, of the righteous. You would shame the plans of the poor. But the, but the Lord, Lord is, is his, his refuge. refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the, the Lord, Lord restores, restores the fortunes, fortunes of, of his people, people let, let Jacob, Jacob rejoice, 
let Israel be glad. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, number 865. Lord, help us ever to the catechism's doctrine plain As Luther taught the word of truth In simple style to tender you Help us your holy law to learn To mourn our sin and from it in faith to you and to your Son and Holy Spirit three in one. Father, <coughs> when we pray for needed help from day to day, that as your children we baptized and so receive. Lord, when we fall or go astray, absolve and lift us up, we pray. And through the sacrament increase, our faith <coughs> depart. Continue with the lessons. Our first lesson for today is taken from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, the 29th chapter. <coughs> By Christ's death and resurrection, God turned the world upside down, Isaiah tells us here. He reversed all the world's wisdom on itself. The shame of the humble is removed, and the pride of the haughty becomes instead their shame. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men gave it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? And the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me. Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, He has no understanding. It is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear and the, the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. O Lord, have mercy on us. Be to God. 
Our epistle reading continues our reading series from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Today we read from chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. We might first ask, what's, what's marriage for, anyway? Hmm. To see how much we can get out of it? No, it's not. God designed marriage for another reason, to be a picture of the gospel of Christ and the church. Marriage is all about what a couple can offer one another. Ephesians 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish, in the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound. And I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to Mark 7. We might first ask ourselves, who of us hasn't worried more about people's opinions of us than God's commands to us? Praise be the Lord for his word of forgiveness in Christ that even covers that kind of hypocrisy. Mark 7. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is korban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But, but now, now in these, these last, last days, he has spoken, spoken to us by his son. son. Now the children come forth for a children's message. <clears throat> Thank you. 
there is this idea that goes through the scriptures today, and it's specifically, it's kind of made clear in Isaiah. Uh, ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who says, who sees us, who knows? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the thing should say of its maker, he did not make me, or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding. The Israelites were coming to worship and they just, they didn't have a lot in their hearts. They were going through the motions, showing up, doing sacrifices, doing the things they're supposed to say, say the things they're supposed to say, listen to things they're supposed to listen to, but in their hearts, because the Lord could see their hearts, there was no faith. There was no belief. They, they were kind of just, as we say, going through the motions. I was going to say to you that uh, thinking about it this week, it kind of creates a kind of a scary image maybe, especially as kids. Is there any place you can go where the Lord doesn't see? Is there anything you can do that the Lord doesn't see? No. It's starting to make life somewhat uncomfortable, isn't it? We can maybe ignore him and pretend he's not there, but he sees everything, right? Everything. Yeah, it's kind of scary. But then again, think about this. Are there moments in your life where the lights are out and it's pitch black and you can't see anyone and you're afraid? Maybe. Maybe. There's been moments like that for me. <clears throat> uh, does the Lord see you there? Yeah, he does. There was a moment where I, was, uh, I went, I went uh, uh, into a deep, deep cave in, in um, Colorado. We were climbing around the cave. And there's a point when, the, when you're in the cave, they turn off all the lights. You're about two miles underground. They turn off all the lights. And it's, they say it's so dark that it's a darkness you, you just can't even comprehend until you experience it. And it's so dark, you literally cannot see your hand right in front of your face. It's that dark. Can the Lord see you there? Yes, he can. When you're alone and people are treating you poorly, when no one will be your friend and no one will be with you, when you're all by yourself, can the Lord see you then? Yes, he can. So in some ways, maybe it's a little scary that the Lord can see every single thing we do, but at the same time, it's a positive thing, isn't it? There's no place you can go. There's no place you can hide. There's no place that's too dark or too deep or too far away for the Lord to be with you, to see you, and to provide for you, okay? So in some ways, maybe not so pleasant, but in a lot of ways, very pleasant, right? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you always keep your eyes on us, that you always watch over us and take care of us. Please, please, never stop watching over us, but always guard and keep us. We pray this in Christ's name. And his will be done in our lives daily. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may return to your seats. Thank you. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, for some of you, maybe the day you're all looking forward to, the day I conclude my sermon series on how to start a family devotion. In our first sermon, we talked about how it's important to create space in your schedules in order to share time together as a family. Our second sermon focused on the need to do these devotions not as an individual, but together, because we are individual people and individual minds who crave after unity and communion with one another. Our third sermon was very straightforward and practical, dealt with the content of a family devotion. And today, our sermon will close all these ideas with a challenge, with a question. Is it enough to just maintain? Let me say that in another way. Is it enough year in and year out to continue to do the same things and hope for different results? I'd like to <clears throat> start our sermon with a few quotations from Scripture. 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. In 2 Thessalonians 1.3, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of, every one of you for one another is increasing. Ephesians 4.15, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, 
into Christ. Revelations 2.26. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. What am I saying here? Simply this. I know that we are saved by the blood of Christ and his blood alone. Say that right first. I know that we are saved. We are made right. We are gained entrance into his heavenly kingdom by Christ's blood and his blood alone. These words have little to do with how you are saved. No, these words I share with you and my words have everything to do with the life we live in this world, the life we live now. We need to move beyond the idea of doing what it takes just to maintain what we have. The, uh, we need more and more the only tried and true method, the only way, the only real source with answers. The only real answer is God's holy word. The only question we have to ask ourselves is how? How can we grow in faith in Jesus towards one another and outwards towards the world? And by the way, if you're sitting there in your pew and thinking there is no growth left for me, then you need this sermon and you need to be part of a Bible study. How will we grow? Well, let me tell you a story. My mother is a hoot. She wants uh, to lose weight. I don't think she needs to lose weight, but she has this kind of like, you know, she's, she's getting into her 60s now. She has this unrealistic idea of what her body should look like, and so she wants to lose weight, and I don't know, whatever. So she gets one of these ab crunchers. You see those things, those ab rockets? that's shaped like a rocket, and then you have this little bar that sits on your lap, and then you sit there and you do this while you watch TV or watch a movie or something like that. And by sitting and watching your favorite TV program for a couple of hours every day, every week, you'll get rock-hard abs. Yeah? <clears throat> but the silly thing is, is that Barring for, you know, scientific discoveries that truly change the world, you know, like miracle pills that do come along every once in a while. You know, insulin was a miracle cure for diabetes and penicillin was a miracle cure for many diseases. Barring those kind of scientific uh, uh, discoveries that change the world, most of the time, 99% of the time, the simplest answers are still the best ones. How do you lose weight? through diet and exercise. How do you save for retirement? You save more, you spend less. And how will our God help you grow in the faith? Through his holy word. <coughs> By hearing it, learning it, inwardly digesting it, and praying it back to him. It's the simple answers, folks. Our problem is all of our actions betray that we are okay with just maintaining, and yet we expect our Redeemer to grow and change. Let's not forget, too, that the idea is out there. I've heard it from other people that somehow, since I am a young pastor, I can single-handedly bring in hundreds of young people all by myself. Well, that's not going to work either. I am young, and I suppose maybe if we were to do a target demographic study of what young people with young kids want, well, this is what I want. It isn't music, and it's not flashy multimedia presentations, and it certainly isn't evangelical theology, ideas, or methods. No, as a young man with a young family, I'm looking for a place of sincerity and history and a confession of faith. A place where people gather to be fed by the word of God and worship him. I love you, and I love this place, and I want what is best for our Redeemer. We can spend all sorts of uh, we can create all sorts of programs. We can make all kinds of music. We can spend all the money in the world and build all sorts of additions. But if we do it without feasting on God's word, preaching it, hearing it, reading it, ingesting it, loving it, and growing in it, we won't change. We will just maintain. At the end of the day, this is why I did this sermon series. Because I love our Redeemer. I love you. And I want to pass on something to our kids someday. I imagine that if we ask the youth of our congregation, how would you feel? If we asked our confirmants, as they're going through confirmation, would you be upset if 15 years from now, because things had changed so dramatically, we had to shutter the doors of our Redeemer? Would you be upset? And I have to imagine our young people would be upset. They'd be angry. They want this place as much as we do. That's what I, what I mean by that. I want Graceland and Joy to have an Our Redeemer to grow up in, a place of good doctrine and loving people where the sacraments are distributed and people are healed or married or even buried 
in the gospel. <clears throat> I would like, I guess, to close by saying this. A long time ago when I was on vacation, uh, we were visiting uh, 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 Otter Tail Lake and we were driving to uh, another area and we passed by a church and an old church cemetery. You don't see that very often anymore. One of these little, it was a beautiful church nestled on a hill above a lake and there was a cemetery behind the church. and It was just so idyllic and we were, we were a little early because church didn't start until 10.30 and it was about 9 o'clock so we had some time to kill. So we thought, I thought we'd stop and just walk around the cemetery and I'd show the girls tombstones and try to connect them to a, you know, a, a history, you know, the 1800s, and some of these tombstones are like 1880, 1870. Like, Look at these things. They've been around for 100 years. It's amazing, right? And as we were walking around, this is about two years ago, so Joy was, I was still holding Joy in my arms, and Grayson was, I think, two years old at the time, running around, maybe between two and three. And she was running between the tombstones and flitting around like little girls do, and it looked as though she was dancing. You know how girls, they twirl around and they dance and they do their ballerina stuff. and Dancing in the cemetery. And I wondered to myself, who was she dancing with? Well, I like to think she was dancing with Jesus. And you can dance too. Every step you learn, every box step, every cha-cha, every rumba, every square dance you learn is going to make your dancing that much sweeter. Dancing is great, but until you know the steps, it's not nearly as much fun. There is no depth to plumb with Jesus and his word. There are no limits. The more you learn of him and his word, the greater the depth of salvation you will see. And the more you see of God's great grace and provision for you, the more you will be amazed by it and humbled to the point of love and gratitude. Martin Luther was a champion of the faith. He fought and stood fast his whole life and in defending, uh, his whole life, defending the gospel. He plumbed its death depths continually. There's uh, the, the, the uh, published works of Martin Luther would fill about, you know, uh, five or six library bookshelves. And, and there's still hundreds upon hundreds of pages that haven't been translated yet. This guy wrote voraciously, and he studied every day, and he loved God's word. I have to imagine... The amount he was in God's word and loving it, praying it, reading it, preaching it, I have to imagine that he understood grace better than I. He saw God's love more clearly than I. And for all that learning and all that writing, all that love shown to him at the end, he was not a proud man, but his final words were simply this. We are beggars, nothing more. The more you read, learn, mark, inwardly digest of God's promises to you, the more you will be filled and shown the grace and love and mercy of God. This is no meaningless pursuit. This pursuit will fill your life with wonderful and precious things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Why would you want to maintain and live as you are now? No, instead, allow Christ to fill you up. Make your heart sing praises. Instead of just maintaining, dance with your Savior. And I pray, I pray that all of you, through Bible study, devotion, reading of God's word, and getting together as a family, I pray that you will dance. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand. We turn to page 238 for the Benedictus of our <clears throat> service. You'll notice there's a section in the Benedictus during morning prayer that is not bolded, and it says L for lector. And that'll be a section that I sing to you. Uh, so just, just note that uh, uh, on the canticle uh, on page 238. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and redeemed them. He has
has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old <coughs> that he would save us from our enemies. To our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to Father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight <coughs> of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guard our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Maybe be seated for our offering. I invite you to stand for the prayer. <coughs> Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a true faith, 
that we would honor God not just with our lips, but serve him faithfully with all of our heart, mind, and strength, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the gift of marriage, and today I, I think especially of our own, of Karen's and mine, that most personal, intimate, and meaningful experience that shows us God's brand of love, and for the opportunity it is for us to learn God's brand of relationship, we give thanks and pray that all wives submit to their husband as a representative of Christ, and that all husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, and that husbands love their wives as they do themselves, and that wives respect their husbands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all Christians, that we not reject God's commandments for the doctrine of men, but rather that we be given grace to keep God's commandments in thought, word, and deed, honoring God in all that we do, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For children of all ages, that they would honor their mother and father so that they would not despise or anger their parents, but honor them, serve and obey them, and love and cherish them, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the baptized children of God, and we think today especially of those around the world who are persecuted for their faith, especially those in the countries of Tanzania, Syria, Egypt, and Iraq, that we might find joy and hope in the waters of holy baptism, so that we might rejoice in the forgiveness of sins that Christ freely pours out in that saving flood, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all those facing difficult life and death decisions, that the Lord of life would guide them and lead them to make God-pleasing decisions, affirming that life is a precious gift from God, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually suffering on account of illness and affliction, and today we remember especially Jean, Tom, Mary, Larry, Virginia, Clifford, Marie, Marge, Brian, Ann, Caleb, Jack, Bill, Byron, Susan, Jennifer, Gwen, Wendell, Dick, Carol, and Al. That God would encourage them and any others on our hearts with his word and grace, and that he would bless all medical professionals with the skills, knowledge, and compassion necessary to alleviate such suffering and pain whenever and wherever possible, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the vast multitude of the faithful departed, gathered already into the kingdom, let us offer our thanks, asking that we may join them in their unending hymns of praise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray today, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to turn to the worship folder. Inside the worship folder, you, you'll find the colic of the day. And we'll pray this uh, prayer together. Almighty and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. 
taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. You may be seated as we conclude with the last hymn, number 580. Good morning. morning. Lord's blessings to you. Um, you know, in, in, uh, in view of, uh, of, of what we've done with the sermon series, Creating a Family Devotion, and, and uh, if one of the ushers are out there, maybe Chuck, if you would mind, the, the devotions are in the copier. Could you grab them real quick to be handed out? Thank you. Uh, in view of all of that, uh, I would highly, highly encourage all of you 
I would love to this year push for 100% attendance at Bible studies. So what I mean by that is, if you're sitting in the pew right now, I'd like to see you at some, one, one version of our Bible studies throughout the week at church, whether that be Fridays for a psalm study, whether that be uh, Sunday morning here to downstairs or upstairs, my, downstairs with myself or upstairs with Pastor Morfitt, uh, whether that be women's Bible study on Monday night or, or uh, another Bible study that maybe is yet to come. Maybe you come to me and say, you know, Pastor, I really haven't found a Bible study that I like. I'd like to see something like this, and by Jove, we'll, we'll figure that out. But I'd like to push for this, this calendar year, 100% attendance at all at, at Bible studies. So if you haven't yet joined one uh, and, and, and started l- drinking deep from God's word, I would highly encourage you. Uh, uh, after Rally Day this year, September, uh, September 13th, right? September 13th, on Rally Day, we'll kick off all of our Bible study schedules. We would, would just highly welcome you to join one of them. Uh, it was Pastor and Karen's uh, anniversary, 38th. Wow. Laura and I celebrated six this year. Uh, 38th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. That was on the 20th, I was told, which was Thursday? Thursday. Okay, well, congratulations and uh, Lord's blessings. And, and uh, thank you for being an example for those of us who haven't been married for very long of an example of wedded love and faithfulness to follow. Appreciate that. Uh, please sign up for, September, uh, for the Twins game. If you're planning on going to the Twins game September 19th, uh, I think this is, Steph, is this the last day today? This is the last day to sign up, so uh, see you then about that, or is there a sign-up sheet? There's a sign-up sheet. So, so she'll pull the sheet after today. If you're planning on going, please sign up today, otherwise you'll be out of luck. Uh, Monday, August 24th, which I believe is tomorrow, there is, a, there is our Redeemer Youth Group, they're doing a fundraiser for the 2016 National Youth Gathering in New Orleans. So if you don't have any plans on Monday night, if you were thinking about eating out anyway once this week, come down, eat at Pizza Ranch with the kids uh, on 10th Street, and that will give them additional funds for them to go to a youth group trip to New Orleans. So please, if you can, do that. Uh, I'd like to clear up some confusion about, um, we ran into some scheduling snafus this year with uh, the outdoor service. I'm sure some of you are like, yay, and some of you are like, boo, uh, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> um, we usually have an outdoor service and then a picnic. Uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to reorientate all of our efforts towards rally day. So our plan is rally day will be the 13th. We, nor- we normally have a, uh, a potluck after rally day. Uh, we'll have the potluck, but then we'll, we'll have additionally some games, maybe an, uh, maybe an inflatable for the kids, some things to do a, uh, uh, as part of the meal as well to kind of celebrate. We'll kind of roll all those things together this summer into one thing. Uh, so that'll be the 13th, uh, 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 and it'll be here at the church. Because uh, the, the thing that made it kind of confusing was the fact that we had the dedication of teachers here next week at the 1030 service. It kind of messed up all of our plans. We had planned on doing the picnic for the 1030 service on the 30th, and then Pastor Tyler came and said, this is what my schedule is, so deal with it. Uh, so we kind of had to, to punt. Um, so Pastor Tyler will be here next week on the, on the, at the 1030 service to install all the, the Sioux Falls Lutheran School teachers, and uh, well, well I, I should say reinstall, and then we have two ones that will be installed for the first time. It's their first year teaching, that will be exciting, so uh, we'll, we'll look forward to that. Uh, as well as at the 8 o'clock service, we'll have Pastor... Uh, Gary Bauk here from the Food for the Poor organization. He'll be preaching and then leading a Bible study during Bible study time. Today during Bible study time, I will not be having Bible study with Pastor Moore. If it will, uh, you may join him in the lounge if you'd like to learn a little bit about Revelation while that's uh, while he's still on that book. <clears throat> so uh, again, next week, 8 o'clock, Gary Bauk, Food for the Poor. Uh, Bible study time will be a Bible study by Gary Bach, and then 10.30 will be installation of schools at, Lutheran, uh, at the Lutheran school and high school. It's going to be a busy day for us next week, and we haven't even gotten to the school year yet, so it's just, wow, one thing after another. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, and don't forget then, uh, over Labor Day weekend, Pastor Daniel Jastrom, who is a, fr- who a cousin of Steve Jastrom, will be here preaching about his mission work in East Asia. So... Senior Choir brings, begins rehearsal September 2nd at 7 p.m. Rally Day is the 13th of September. And 
I think I will let you look at the rest of the announcements on your own. Uh, please read them uh, carefully and take a look at them. Again, the Bible, are the devotions are out for you as you come through receiving line. Lord's blessings to you as you continue his kingdom work in his uh, kingdom. And I love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Blessings.